What's new? Good. Had a good off season so far. We added, uh, not added, but we call it re-add. Darren and uh, Darren and Matt. That's a good start. Added Trumbo and Riffenhauser. What's the correct pronunciation for sure? I should know. Is it Rife or Riffenhauser? I'm guessing it's Reef. I bet we'll know. We got to come up with a nickname. Are you expecting any more moves before the day ends? Um, was Rule 5 considered a move? No. That's tomorrow morning. Um, could be. I know we're, we're, we've got a lot of things that branch off of obviously what we do with Chris or what Chris does with us, the decision he has to make. I guess he's making the decision. And then, uh, you know, I think a lot of things branch off that. We've got a lot of things in the, about the pitching. Cause that was the biggest difference last year was the pitching, our starting pitching. And I've got a lot of confidence that uh, um, those guys are going to pitch more to what they're capable of. They had some good outings too, but that, you know, I think in a lot of cases, you know, you compare it to Miguel return to form, Chris seeking a level that he's capable of, you know, right on down the line, guys that we think is going to make a, make a move on that rotation. Chris. Uh, what's the interaction nowadays? What do we call that? Text. We 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 tried to stay out of that that part of it a little bit. I respect. Uh, you know, we had plenty of opportunities to talk. I talked to Chris obviously every day, and at some point he's gonna have to make a decision if that's enough or how much is enough. And you know, he'll believe me, he can't. He uh, he's gonna make a good call where he wants to go with his baseball and his career and his life. But, uh, you know, we're prepared to go either way. And do you kind of view it almost as a win-win for you guys if you can retain a guy like Chris who's so important, so popular, but if not, you can use those funds to improve in other areas and the fans are realizing that you guys were committed to spending because word has gotten out of it. Well, I don't think, I'm not sure there was an offer made. You know, I'm not sure who's reporting all that. You know how certain things work this time of, I don't know. I don't, I'm not privy to that. Maybe y'all know more than I do, but we know how some people use those type of things to develop other things. So I try to keep reality in mind, but I know we're interested and have, they've done some things to try to pers move that along. But, you know, at this point, you know, I'd like to have Chris. I'm thinking about uh, opportunities that might be around the corner for a guy like Christian Walker or, or Trey Mancini. You know, there's not many people in minor leagues had better numbers than Trey and Christian had another big good year too. So, uh, and as obviously Trumbo's there, and there's some other things out there. But you know, our first hope would be to bring Chris back. But you know, the game will move on without me, without anybody, nobody. You know, we we think we've been we've created a great opportunity for Chris, and you know, we'll see where it goes. Buckins in Philadelphia, we're just not getting to know the new general manager Matt Klintak. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about him and, and just what? Oh, they. I tell you, they've got a quality team together, you know, starting with Joe Jordan and, um, and their farm director. I believe Joe's still doing that, isn't he? And then uh, Matt and, of course, Andy. I saw him last night and you're in good hands. You're going to like the direction that's going to go. Just uh, it'll be very, very solid and very well thought out and they'll treat people well and they'll put together a product that the people of Philadelphia will be real proud of. With Matt specifically, you just know the baseball operations side of well, I know him, I, you know him real well when you're around him, you know, almost 12 months. Uh, energy, knowledge, good people skills, very competitive, um, good, good slow fire. He'll, uh, he'll, he'll, you get to the finish line. Buck, if Matt Wieters is healthy enough to play 135, 140 games, that would, that would relegate. Caleb I hope I'm. That's a lot. That's. Yeah. A, I hope I'm ready for 135, 140. Are you going to be able to get Caleb Joseph enough time? I'm not going to talk about because he's here. Yeah. Is he still here? Caleb, let's talk about it. <laughs> now Caleb lives here. Big David Lipscomb guy. You know the nickname of Lipscomb? Yeah. What is it? The, Nick the, nickname Lipscomb. No, David Lipscomb. No, 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 the, <laughs> Bison's. Big Bison. What are the colors? Red and purple and gold. Purple and gold. Close. No, uh, there's plenty of time for everybody. You know, he, uh, you know, we're all excited, including Caleb, about having Matt back because it helps us win, and that's what we want to do. But uh, 
we have a good luxury that uh, we have two guys capable of catching extensive games, and we wouldn't bat an eye with either one of them back there. What does it say about that guy, though, that he was so excited to have Matt Wieters back? Well, you, you want to win, and if Matt Wieters is on your team, you got a better chance to win. And I think Caleb's mature enough to know that, you know, they're both about the same age. And once you've been on both sides of the mountain, you realize really what's important. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's about winning baseball games. They also, Caleb's mature enough to know there's plenty of at-bats around. And um, things have a way of, uh, you know, if you carry that criteria and that makeup, things seem to work out. And... Uh, I'll find plenty of bats for everybody. They'll be crying uncle before it's over. Buck, in the search for left-handed hitters, if, it's a, if the Orioles acquired a right-handed hitter with very good numbers against right-handed pitching. I don't care. You know, at this point, I, want, it, it, I, I know what it looks like aesthetically on paper. You know, if you want to, I don't think Toronto had much trouble with the right-handed hitters. They had all in the lineup last year. So um, I'm more looking for, you know, we're looking for quality offensive performers, and uh, if they happen to be left-handed, so be it. But uh, you've seen a lot of those uh, splits kind of reverse as we go forward. I mean, strikeouts are at an all-time high, walks are at an all-time low. And, um, you know, I think you're going to see certain skill sets kind of evolve as, you, as the game goes forward. But you talk about Chris you know, waiting on him to make, make a decision, but at some point... Not really. Not, not that long. Won't wait forever. But that's what I'm saying. How difficult is that? knowing that, you know, you can't really wait. Well, we, we haven't. You know, we've got Christian Walker. We've got Trey Mancini. We've got Mark Trumbo. Uh, who knows what happens with Steve Pierce. I bet Caleb Joseph could play some first base if he wanted to, and Matt Wieters could too. And, uh, you know, we have options. Uh, but um, in the whole scheme of things, uh, my biggest concern is that we get better in the pitching department. We scored enough runs to win last year. And everybody thought when we lost Nelson and uh, – Nikki, that we, we end up scoring more runs last year. We'd like to have both those guys back if they want to give them back for free. Was Miguel okay when he got back from that injury? Probably not. Probably not. I mean, depending on what you call back? okay, nobody's 100%. But, no, we don't, we don't rush back. But he did everything possible. But there's a different level when you're pitching in a game than a sim game and a rehab start. You don't completely know what a guy is physically until they get between a major league game. So... I, I wouldn't surprise me if that was the case, but I tell you, he's really getting after it. And you know, guys like him and, and Tilly, and uh, you know, I talked to Ubaldo, who's getting married this week. They, uh, you know, they've got a little really strong burn to get back to where the level, because they know more, most importantly, how much it means to our club. What were you going to ask, Rock? How important is it to you to have a left hander in the rotation? Just like the hitters, I, I'm fine. I'm not going to take a. I'd rather take a real good right-handed pitcher as opposed to a mediocre left-hander. It's all right. I mean, it works. You know. You know, sooner or later, right-handed hitters, right-handed pitchers are going to have to get left-handed hitters out, and left-handed stars are going to have to get right-handed hitters out. So that's the way the lineups go. But um, if I have a good left-handed star like we had last year, that's fine. But we got some good left-handed options that are currently here that may not be completely ready. Chris Jones had about as good a year as anybody could have in AAA, and he's on our roster now. Now that Darren O'Day is in your bullpen, how does that all set up? How are you feeling about the uh, We're still evolving. We've got a uh, couple spots left open, you know, and uh, we all know the situation with Dylan. Dylan's going to get the ball a lot this spring and see if he's ready to take the load. But, uh, you know, we're still kicking around some things uh, in the – bullpen market. You know, there's two ways to look at it. You can try to build from one end, which you know is very, very expensive, or you can build from the other end, which is sometimes not quite as expensive. Some people might disagree where Darren's concerned. I think Darren earned every penny he got. But Dan, Dan said that the Orioles have been aggressive in terms of getting left-handed hitters. He said yesterday there was a couple of trades in terms of pitching. Do you feel like the, the front office, Dan, you, everyone, it, it's maybe more aggressive this year than in all seasons past? Well, I think it's got a lot to do with the date moving up on the Fan Fest. I'm, I'm kidding, but I'm just, you know, we got, we got, we got Fan Fest this weekend. I ain't, well, I ain't getting up on that stage in front of our season ticket holders naked, all right? And we're more ways than one. No, I, I'm just kidding. No, it's, it's what's presented itself that's worked. You know, if the timetable's quicker, that's why, but uh, it's just that it presented itself as such. And, um, 
you know, the backbone is always going to be the, the people we have from our system, you know, like the Caleb's and everybody else. That uh, If you look at our, you know, our third basin from our system, our, our shortstop was acquired through people from our system, our second baseman from our system, our catching through our system. Our first baseman might be through our system at some, if, it, if it doesn't work out with Chris. You know, I can go right around the diamond. So um, I like where we are in the off season. I like the, the irons we have in the fire right now that it fits who we are and how we have to do things. Given what you know about your lineup now with Weeders and Jones and Hardy and, and the rest, what would be the ideal fit for an outfielder, either in left field or right field? What type of start would it be? Would it be an on-base guy and more another power guy? How would you look at that? Um, take each case as it comes. I mean, you look at it, uh, there's not that many prototype leadoff hitters anymore. I mean, they're getting harder and harder to find the way that we used to view them. That doesn't make it right or wrong. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the people we have. I think it's 39 on our roster right now. You know, if somebody else comes on the rise, and Dan talks to me every day about possibilities out there. I know he said no to one last night that we didn't like the people we were giving up. You know, we, we like our guys. We like our people that we don't, you know, if we give, give something up, we need to get something back for it. But do you think that you need to sort of diversify your offense, have more speed guys, have more on base? Where are they? Who? I mean, who would you go? Would you give up Caleb Joseph for that guy? No. But uh, this is pretty this is, this is pretty handy having him here. I mean, Caleb's, Caleb's a sneaky runner, too. No. Uh, uh, I mean, what do you look at? You know, it's all about scoring runs. Can you score runs? You know, how you go about it, you know, everything comes with a price and comes with a caveat. And you know, what about this guy? Well, he's got medical issues. What about this guy? Well, he wants seven years. What about this guy? Um, it requires trading your best prospect for him, you know. And so that's where you go back and forth on. And you know, that's why free agents, that's why you want to develop your own. It's just so far with the exception of Trumbo, we haven't liked the, the reciprocal part of it. One of the guys you developed and you like a lot is Jonathan Scope. Could you talk about what most, what you thought he advanced his game as? What, what part of his game? John, it's just that John's going to, I say all the time, I just want to know when I, like this time of year, is somebody going to be as good as they're capable of being? And John will be because of not only John, but the people that are around him and make the right demands of him and he makes of himself. And, you know, I look at Kevin Gosman hitting his stride next year. I think uh, there's a lot of potent, uh, room there for John to grow. I think uh, Manny's, you know, he went to another level last year. I think there might be another level there. I think uh, JJ, you know, believe me, he's got a nice burn going this time of the year. And he's, he's I think you're going to see him healthy hopefully next year. Adam didn't completely have the type, you know, Adam wants to do it all. But, uh, I think there's some people that have a really good frame of mind about what they want to contribute next year compared to last year. The who? What have they done now? Price, what else? Uh, who, who paid for the fourth out? Uh, Chris Young? Chris Young. Uh, picked up the he's better than that. He's, that's the type of things I think, you know, the prices and everything. The teams with that type of payroll, what they do when they take the, the what ifs. That's really what hurts us. Now, Chris Young, that's a great pickup for a team that kind of, and he'll end up playing a lot. That's, uh, I, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to what they're doing. It's a given they're going to spend and develop and do what they can do. I do the same thing. They're good. They're always good. Doug, do you think it would be hard for the Orioles to part with the 14th pick, or is there a right scenario that you do that? We talked about something the other day that would require that. It'd have to be something that really fits. You know, but we would if we had to. But I'm one of our big days is going to be the in June. We got seven picks in the first hundred in the draft. And I don't know if we've ever had that. And this is this is big for us. We can solidify our already strong system with uh, and be that's who we are. We've got to hit this draft like we have. And you know, if you look at because we're not drafting first three or four like when we got Matt and we got Manny and. Gosman was what fifth or something. I mean, those kind of jump out at you, you know. So 
we're going to have to be good at it because having we, a lot of picks does that make it easier to part with the 14th? And that's just not for, not. We're not just going to give it away just because it's there. 14th, pretty good player. And um, there's a. I'm sure, our guys will be looking at a lot of those Friday night pitchers around the country where we got them lined up. So I know they're going to. A lot of people. We're really looking forward to the draft. Like you, you talk a lot about you know knowing who you guys are as a team. And, um, and who we're not. In terms of that, though, you know, obviously the, the payroll has steadily increased you know, over the past few years, and right now you guys are already you know reaching or surpass that hundred million mark. I mean, is is who you guys are changing just maybe a little bit? No, nah, if you look at who uh, compare, everybody's going up somewhat. I mean, we were always kind of at the top of the second tier. They do something baseball there. There's a front, third tier, middle tier, and I think that we always kind of fit. I know we're trying to correctly pay people, and everybody I've heard Dan talk about it, where they, you know, make sure the pay scale fits that. So, uh, you know, we're right. Like I've said many times, you know, our ownership's been great since I got here. We got, there's, we got every resource we need to compete with these people. We just have to be good at things that they may not have to be. Buck, you talked about Darren O'Day, and we've seen teams now kind of build around that bullpen, like I said, build it one way or the other. Are those arms an even more of a premium now? Because, you know, you see you had a closer, maybe a setup guy, and you're doing now teams are looking at shortening that game three and into a more inning sometimes. Well, you're always trying to, in a perfect world, develop that from within. You know, the old-fashioned way it used to be, you start out in the bullpen and worked your way into a starter. But um, I think because starting pitchers going deep in the game is so challenging that uh, the more pieces it used to be you try to expose the underbelly of a bullpen as those guys that pitch in the fifth and sixth inning that's why you want to try to get that star out of there but now you're seeing I was looking at a thing they had out this in one of the meetings we had that the, the average velocity is higher than it's ever been in the history of the game and the uh, and the average location of pitches is better than it's been so you're talking about guys that are throwing harder locating better so those guys, I think a lot of it's got to do with the bullpens. And people have realized that um, it's a little less challenging sometimes to find some guy that can pitch one inning as opposed to six or seven or eight or nine. And it's a lot uh, cheaper. You guys finding there's a lot of interest in Zach from teams out there that are now looking for close? I'm sure there is. We're not moving him. No, we, Zach was pretty excited about Darren coming back. The way I understand, you know, I haven't heard that broached. We got him, what, two or three more years? That's exciting. He, uh, uh, Brock and uh, it's a big year. We're still looking to add uh, potentially another piece down our bullpen. What did Brock do to take his game? He graduated a little bit. Uh, yeah. I just think he got out of his own way. You know, he had periods where he'd get off the horse, but he'd get right back on it. You know, a lot of times it's about the trust that he allows me to have in him. And when he'd take a little step back, you know, I knew that next time out that he wasn't going to wall around in self-pity and he was going to get after it again. I think that that created a lot of trust for everybody in, in Brad. How about, how was it for you? 